Hi again everyone, Scott Pyre Pop Call fan here, and in this video, I am going to be reviewing the newest Avatar movie, Avatar The Way of Water. I saw the movie last night with my family, and I am ready to talk about this movie. And this movie has been 13 years in the making. It's been in development for a very long time. The director, James Cameron, has spent quite a long time making this movie and a few other sequels that will be coming um you know, down the line as well. So this isn't the the first, I mean, I mean, the, this is the first of many sequels that will be coming out within the next uh, several years. So um, Avatar The Way of Water, it's kind of a, it's kind of a middle chapter in a way. And I will get into that a little bit more. Uh, but uh, this movie, it's definitely something that you just can't not look at. You can't not look at this movie. Um, from beginning to end, it's a beautifully shot film. Very well-crafted, um, amazing visual effects just across the board. It's like n literally next level like uh, CGI uh, animation just done so well. Very well-crafted um, in regards to the visual effects, the cinematography, the lighting, just all of that, the motion capture technology has advanced so much ever since, like, say, I don't know, Lord of the Rings, when they made Gollum, uh, Andy Serkis played him in that in, in those movies, and that similar kind of motion capture technology just keeps advancing every time they make another movie with that technology. Um, the Planet of the Ape movies had the te same technology, and they're doing using the same technology with these movies as well and it just it keeps advancing it, and it, every time um we just keep seeing that technology advance more and more and it gets better and better with the way it looks it's photorealistic cgi it's beautiful um it's amazing what they have accomplished here with this movie and and you know, all the characters in this movie too um you know this is a family film you know you were following jake sully we're following his wife and a majority of this movie actually focuses on his kids so i really like that aspect of this movie it's a family film and you get you spend a lot of time with jake's kids in this film which is something i actually really liked um you get to uh, know more about kiri who is actually voiced by Sigourney Weaver, by the way. Um, uh, Sigourney Weaver, she's she's such an amazing actress. She really is. Um, you, you know, she her obviously her most iconic role was in the Alien movies, and James Cameron did, did direct the second Aliens movie um, with Sigourney Weaver, and also uh, Sam Worthington, who plays Jake in these movies. He was also in a Terminator movie, uh, not a Terminator movie that James Cameron made, but. Um, you know, a similar actor from those movies, all playing Jake in these movies, and, uh, and Zoe Saldana, uh, I'm sure a lot of people know her, uh, she played Gamora in Guardians of the Galaxy, in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and she's playing, uh, you know, Jake's wife, uh, in, in these movies, and all the actors across the board, uh, uh, have done very well in their roles in the, in this movie, and also in the previous film, and um Stephen Lang <laughs> they brought him back um I liked what they did with his character um I definitely liked him a lot more in this movie um and I mean I don't want to spoil it but um what they do with him it was rather interesting and there was another character in this movie who was kind of like a an adopted child that was human and that was interesting um like and he you know at the beginning of the film had very close relations with Jake's kids and because he was basically part of their family because uh, I guess Jake sort of adopted him and he, he was born human so it was inter interesting what they did there and then the whole thing with uh, Kiri, uh, Jake's daughter I don't want to spoil that either but I really liked what they did with her um, I thought that was really cool she's definitely my favorite uh, character in the movie actually um, the more I think about it, I think out of all the kids that we followed in this film, I think her and also Jake's youngest son, um, were the two kids, um, I, la I latched onto the most. 
between Kiri and I can't remember the uh, his son's name at the moment, but I liked what they did with his character. Um, he has he had sort of a bit of a conflict with some of the natives of the Sea Tribe of Navi, um, which I also want to talk about here and now. Um, it's interesting because near the beginning of the film, you know, the title of the movie sort of explains it. Um, Jake's family goes to this other tribe of Navi. They're like people of the sea, basically. And we've had movies like that before. Um, so, again, just like the previous film, I will say that this movie does borrow a lot from other movies uh, in regards to the story. Uh, there's a lot uh, about the story of this film that, once again, is familiar. So there is that. Um, it didn't bother me too much this time around, but I did notice it. I did notice quite a few things about this movie that are familiar, um, things that have done, been done before in other movies. Um, um, but yeah, um, it was really cool, though. It was beautiful. Uh, like, the underwater scenes were really well done uh, for a movie that primarily took place in the water. Um, definitely. Uh, some So much beautiful shots, uh, iconic imagery, um, just in the underwater scenes alone, um, all that was really well handled, and, wow, um, the story of this movie, um, I think it's definitely, it's easy to follow, you know, it's not like a complicated story or anything, there's not too much that's really that original, uh, I will say that, uh, that's something that's also said about the first film, um, it's, but it, it's an easy story to follow. You can watch this movie without even needing to watch the first film, um, but it would help. <laughs> and overall, I just, the music as well, uh, the music was once again just amazing. I think, was, is James Horner the composer? I think James Horner is a composer, uh, but um, he was uh, did a great job with the music uh, once again. And another thing to be said about this movie and also the uh, sequels that will come out after this, these movies were co-written by Rick Jaffa and, Emil and, Emil Rick Jaffa and Emil Amanda Silver, uh, their husband and wife. Uh, they worked on the Planet of the Eight reboot films. So, again, I mean, I, I know I didn't... I don't think I mentioned it in my previous video but yeah uh th these two um co-wrote these sequel movies that on uh, this one and i think the next couple of films they co-wrote with james cameron and you know they worked on the planet of the eight films so definitely and also like the last shot of this movie um, there, there are a few scenes in this movie that reminded me of Star Wars. There's a few scenes in this movie that reminded me of Planet of the Apes, um, and I, I'm, you know, I don't want to compare to those, but I, I did notice them. There were, I guess, kind of like clever homages or references, I guess, to Star Wars and Planet of the Apes, but I couldn't help it. I love science fiction. Uh, <laughs> I noticed. Uh, some scenes in this movie that reminded me of Star Wars and Planet of the Apes. I can't help it. But, yeah, uh, it was a really good movie, though. Uh, I loved it. Uh, I wouldn't say I have too many flaws with it, but like I said, familiar story. Uh, and also, I guess, I guess if I had to nitpick about one thing, there were a group of kids in this movie that were basically bullies, and... Uh, those characters I didn't really like that much. I didn't really care for them. Um, so there are a few characters in this movie that I, that I didn't really care for. Like the group of kids that were basically bullies. And then there were also some characters that followed uh, Korich, the villain. Who, those characters in particular, there wasn't much to them. <laughs> they, were, they were also like avatars uh, that were characters that were following Korich, uh, the villain, and there wasn't much to them at all. Uh, I didn't really care for them either. Uh, but, yeah, that's really it for my f 
flaws, though, in regards to this movie. It's a really good film. I definitely like it more than the first film. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It it's really solid. And also, that third act, that third act of this movie, wow. Um, some amazing action sequences in this film. Definitely think that this movie handled action se sequences a lot better than the first film did, in a way. Um, and it was intense, it was dramatic, there were some quite intense moments in that third act, wow. But it was really good, really well done, and this was a very, very solid film. I like it all, quite a bit more than the first one. And as I mentioned uh, just a little bit ago, uh, the fact that um, I said it's sort of a middle chapter, uh, I definitely felt that way uh, when the movie ended. Like it, you know, the movie kind of left you wanting more. And I definitely think that bec because of the fact that this is a second film in a series of four or five films, it definitely felt that way. Uh, and when it ended. Uh, and also, um, as I said, um, because of the way this ended, um, as I said before, the fact that uh, there was a scene that reminded me of Planet of the Apes, literally, the last shot of this movie was a very similar to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um, I must say that right now. Um, just because the last shot of this movie just panned to Jake's face close up. Uh, like a close-up um, of Jake, his face, and that that last shot of the movie, it was straight from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. They did that with that movie, too. Um, the way it ended in the last, in the very last shot of the movie. Um, and, yeah, so that should be it for all of my thoughts. So I'm gonna go ahead and... Oh. It was a great film, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, um, my grade for Avatar, The Way of Water is an A. Oh man, a great film, highly recommend it. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.